Good morning everyone. In today's video I will continue from where we stopped in the last one and I was talking about um, a single point uh, tractor and uh, in the previous uh, theoretical part I explained that uh, we might need uh, you know uh, a grid of points has been distributed and shown here and a 20 by 20 point to create this uh, rectangular array and then we compare its location to a specific point located here in the center we can move that point which is a single point attractor and then by the use of the uh, distance to uh, node I can just uh, you know discover or find out the distance between each one of those nodes to the specific point and then get some act like the change in the radius as we can see in uh, the, the previous video that I posted last time. So uh, the concept behind that, uh, how we can just get it, you know, applied in an architectural environment. So I'll, I'll try to give you as much as I can of a practical videos. That's the first part of it. And in it, um, assuming that I'm having a very basic plan for an area or a district or a small city, and there's a big roundabout in the middle. I know I'm not just uh, paying too much attention to the detail in the drawing. It's just as just symbols that I'm just uh, having here. So if that's my main roundabout, it's like a monument or uh, like a focus point, a focal point, sorry, uh, that every single unit of those circles that represent the tower that's actually uh, looking at it. And uh, I want to distribute the whole towers here, the whole circles, and specify the height that allow at least the top parts of those towers to have a view or, uh, you know, to grade their height based on this uh, specific point or focal point. Uh, I can just, uh, you know, uh, change this and have, you know, the, the reverse effect by assuming which is again some of the cities having it it's just you know that the, the towers near the center uh, of the city is actually higher than the rest and as the land actually is getting more expensive in the middle or near the center the tower around it will be the higher one and as we go you know from it it will you know just decrease in height uh, to get this maybe more familiar with the cities you can see nowadays going towards suburbs and so on so whatever the thing whatever whatever the condition you want to design for uh, using the you know the single point attractor will be a good example of how uh, we can apply that so i will just um, you know open a new file and uh, try to show you how that can be done and just we practice the previous theoretical part that we had so let's do it uh, so i'm going to just sing, close the you know the, the dynamo file I will just uh, I think I need to unhide I have just hide some of those elements that I have it's just basic circles each one represent a tower or a you know an, a specific built area so let's, let's just on everything and activate dynamo and I'm just gonna go for a new file just want to highlight that that's uh, this very basic uh, sketch I've done here in the model line in Revit is all built in a unit of meter uh, it's not uh, a millimeter I don't advise to go with a millimeter in this condition so we need a select model element and elements actually both of them so in the select model elements and this guy will just uh, allow us to select the whole group of the required uh, you know uh, uh, built area or those towers profile and I need a single one, which is the one that represents the attractor point. I know it might be a little bit different from what we learned as a grid point. Now, this is more useful, I think, because it's allow us, you know, to go ahead and select the entire, uh, an entire set of circles uh, in one condition. And it's a random, a random set of selection instead of a regular uh, grid. So I'm going to go first and select the attractor point, which is the... You know this this circle actually uh, getting this object to dynamo as you can see now probably I will need to get rid of all those circles and you know sketch lines that I draw uh, probably they're gonna just annoy us so just a good idea if you select them and then hide them okay. 
that will ease the process of selecting the overall as you can see in here so now those are the you know the the selected elements that we want to change their heights based on their relationship or the distance to the attractor point so if you zoom out in here you can see that we get all the uh, rivet elements here as a geometries inside uh, as an elements actually inside dynamo so those are rivet geometry and those are you know just an elements and, and, and images of those elements in here so they are still an element phase uh, you can go ahead and uh, you know unhide everything if you want here and in rivet uh, I'll show you here select all and then right click unhide And uh, I don't know if, if you've noticed in the example, I just had a copy uh, just for presentation purposes from all, you know, all the roads and the circles uh, that won't be actually extruded. So you can just go ahead and select them, such a thing like that if you want. Or just, you know, go for hide here. I'm just too lazy to do that right like that so I'm gonna hide those guys and again I'm just gonna you know select all those things and as you can see when you select them you get those you can keep this you can keep hiding the rest of the elements and getting that just a representation or just an element here in dynamo it depends if, if you want to see that bigger circle or the main road uh, in the dynamo itself if you don't just ignore that I'm not gonna use this uh, in any kind of exercise here in Dynamo. Anyway, so now we need to get uh, actual actual location of each one of those elements. So the best thing to do that is to write elements and try to see what type of uh, functions we can have. I'm gonna go here, hit points, and when you hit a point, you can see what type of function you have inside. Uh, we'll go to get location. Uh, pay attention if it's a built-in or uh, you know a package it's just a part of the rivet one so I can go ahead and easy using it so now if you can just you know open that you're gonna get those 160 elements that you got and you're gonna get to see here uh, what they are actually it's just giving you a geometry meaning it's just translating the elements or rivet elements into a dynamo geometry and you can see inside it's telling you now it's a circle and it have a normal location it has a vector for the direction to have a center point which is have x y and z and also the radius so that sounds interesting so far so let's turn off this now we need to know the actual uh, center point for the circle so i'm going to go circle dot uh, center let me get From the dynamo element, let me get the points, and I now can have only the x, y, z. So this dude has just changed rivet element into dynamo geometry, and this guy just take the points out of the the circles and their uh, vectors and then their radiuses. All this information just get us the the points of it, the points of them actually. Whatever you're gonna do in this list, you have to do actually in the attractor point so you can go with control probably moving that and just get this one point here now the rest is technically very similar to what we have done before again it's a distance two I think yeah this one geometry that's the grid or that's the group of object and that's the attractor point and now this guy should create for us the distances that we have from each point from each tower let's say to the roundabout here to the center of the to the center of that roundabout now the rest is very similar as i said so math dot map it's actually uh yeah here remap range 
one. In it, I will take the values you get here, and I will assume that the minimum height is something like 20 meter, and the maximum is 120. And now we are going to scale everything from 20 to the minimum will be 20 and the maximum will be 120. And again, I'm going to create an exit road and have to be a solid extrude so extrude as a solid with a distance that's what we want uh, the distances is this and of course we need the circles which they are those elements if you can still remember them that we get from converting rivet elements into dynamo geometries just connect those and dynamo now should create you know, the point attractor system, they create all the tower, extrude them, and give each one of them a specific height that allow the, you know, the distance to be, you know, graded. And the closer to get to the roundabout, the shorter it goes. Or simply, just to switch that, just make the minimum the maximum, the maximum is the minimum. And you've got the other case where the towers are just taller and higher when you know get closer to the center of the city and also that makes sense as this you know very expensive you, know, you get more height and more investment in this area and you get this shape anyway that's uh that's the video that i wanted to show you and how you can get benefit out of the single point attractor I will try to get uh, another example so soon related to uh, facade design and how we can get benefit of the point attractor uh, technique. Thank you very much. I wish that you find this uh, video useful. Have a good day and bye bye.